All right, it is 202. We will go ahead and get started. All right, so welcome to our January PO monthly call. This is our second of the two. So the, the last one was this past uh, Monday. So uh, we're going to talk about a few things today. So our agenda for this meeting is to talk a little bit about the learning community event series uh, for 2024. We'll discuss the topics and when those are going to occur. We'll talk a little bit about the QI focused meetings that are a part of your 2024 VBR. We'll talk a little bit about the quarterly report schedule for 2024, which is the reports that we send you with all of the aggregated PDO level data. We'll talk about the MDC release schedule, which is the data updates within the patient data dashboards. And then we'll also talk about recruitment timelines for adding additional POs and practices to MCTTD. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about our spring regional meetings. So for our 2024 learning community events, as the same as we did in 2023, we'll be hosting 10 separate events. We do offer uh, um, continuing education credits uh, for physicians, nurses, pharmacists, and dietitians for attendance at the live sessions. The sessions are recorded and available, and that is available for learning community credit, but do note that uh, continuing medical education credit is not available for the recorded sessions, just the attendance or watching them and then completing a short knowledge-based five-question quiz just to uh, attest that you watched it for your learning community credit. Um, registration information um, will be disseminated for those events early next week. Um, so keep an eye out for those. And as always, they will always be available on our website under the learning community section. So the topics for those are listed here. So uh, we have the first one on February 12th. That's going to be led by Dr. Hung and Dr. Iyengar. And that's going to be discussing referrals to specialists, specifically endocrinologists and nephrologists. So Dr. Mike Hung is our nephrology lead. And Dr. Jenny Iyengar is, is one of our participating endocrinologists uh, uh, in the collaborative. She's not currently affiliated with MCTTD, um, but she'll be able to provide an outside perspective as far as uh, providing referrals to endos from primary care. Um, our March session will be led by Dr. Gabison, and we'll be talking about some of the updates that have come out recently from the ADA with regards to standards of care for type 2 diabetes, and specifically what's new and what's changed. Um, our April session will be led by Dr. Grazda, and that'll be focusing again on low and very low carb diet interventions and utilizing a CGM to assist in those. Um, and then we'll be having a panel discussion in May on the CGMQI focus. And then we'll also have panel discussions for the following two events for our medications and low carb diet QI focuses. Um, and then uh, speakers yet to be determined for our August and September events, but those topics will include social determinants of health and mental health and type 2 diabetes. Um, and then uh, to wrap up the year, we'll have a dashboards update uh, by myself, uh, Laria Young and Dr. Lee. Um, and then in uh, finally in November, we'll be talking about diabetes prevention and remission. And again, speaker to be determined for that. So the QI focused meetings are listed here on the dates that they are occurring. Um, and so just as a reminder that this meeting is a part, attendance at this meeting, excuse me, is a part of your PO scorecard. Um, we have received a few requests to share the information of which POs uh, are working on the same QI um, so that you can have that community aspect of this and you're able to, they're able to reach out to other folks that are working on similar type uh, quality improvement activities. And so uh, one of the things we wanted to get your feedback on is if this is something that you'd be comfortable with, um, with us sharing. So specifically what would be uh, sharing would be your PO name, the PO representative, so your name and email and uh, your proposed process change. Uh, and that would just be shared across those folks, those PO, POs. Uh, that uh, are working on the same goal. If if you have specific feedback about that and are comfortable putting it in the chat, would love to hear your feedback here on this meeting. If you'd prefer to reach out to us separately or in an email and let us know um, if you have thoughts or feelings either way on that, we would greatly appreciate it. I'll pause just for a sec so that if people do want to put it in the chat, you don't have to type while I'm talking to you. Seeing a couple comfortables in the chat, great. Okay, awesome. All right, cool. Thanks, guys.
I'm seeing no no dissenting opinions. All right, great. If somebody, if one of your, if one of your, your POs is is not comfortable with that and would like to specifically be excluded from that, please do please do reach out to us and we can make sure that we don't do that for your PO. Um, we want to make sure that that's something that you're you're all comfortable with. Okay. Um, so moving on to our quarterly report. So the first report of 2024 will be distributed at the end of this month. Um, and we'll combine the graphs and information from the previous two reports with uh, the current data, which it goes through September 30th of 2023. And so that's an update, obviously, based off of where the data went through for the last reports of 2023. Um, and then our report cadence will be additional reports distributed, like we mentioned, these are quarterly. So the end of January, March, July, and October. Um, and then we also are starting uh, having our design team work with our data analysts and uh, database experts to uh, kind of incorporate some of the really great feedback that we've received from all of you guys to make the reports a little bit more useful and a little bit more user friendly um, with some key elements of user centered design incorporated. And so that's one of the things we're really, really looking forward to um, in 2024 is making these even more useful for you guys. So with regards to our data updates uh, for MDC and the patient data dashboards, this is our data updates schedule. And so there are a total of six or um, excuse me, eight data refreshes across the year with four feature enhancements. So the distinction there being data releases uh, or data um, updates increase the date that the data goes through. And so you can see on the right-hand column there, the paid claims and clinical data through date. So if the update, for example, on uh, February 6th is pushed out, uh, then that data will then be through November 30th and so on and so forth. Uh, feature enhancements are when we add additional um, functions or change features or add features to the patient data dashboard, either the patient identification tool or the summary statistics page. Um, and so this is the release schedule here for that. Um, so like say uh, a total of eight data enhancements um, over the course of the year. And each time we do do a feature enhancement, we also update the data. So one of the things that our design team and our uh, colleagues over at MDC are working hand in hand with this year is releasing what we're calling Dashboard 2.0. And so uh, for those that joined the collaborative very at the very beginning back in uh, 2021, you may remember that we launched the patient data dashboard in November of 2021 with our very first release. And, and since then, like I mentioned in the previous slide, we've been doing enhancements every quarter. Um, but what we're hoping to do with this overarching larger release is uh, trying and is, is incorporate a huge amount of user feedback that our design team has gathered through our dashboard user feedback session. So if you participated in those, thank you. It's really guided our, our development of, of this dashboard 2.0. And we're hoping to build in a number of additional features, make it considerably more user friendly, bring it um, a little bit more update up to date with how uh, quality improvement is really action um, um, uh, operationalized at the practice level and make it even more useful for you guys. And so we are estimating that this release will be coming sometime in quarter three um, of 2024. So that's something to look forward to. So for our spring regional meetings, uh, we do have meetings currently scheduled uh, for all of our sites. And so those holds have been sent to everybody. Um, registration for those meetings will open in January and early February. And so uh, you'll note here that the locations for Livonia, Ann Arbor, Troy, Kalamazoo, and Grand Rapids are all the same. The dates for those are listed here as well. Um, do note that if you are in the regions whose meetings are usually in Bay City and Traverse City, the locations for those have changed. Excuse me. The Bay City meeting, uh, we were not able to uh, get our preferred venue. Um, it was already booked, so we did have to transition to a new venue. Um, we will likely plan to be back in Bay City for the next round of regional meetings, uh, but for the time being, we will be in Saginaw. Um, that location will be forthcoming as well when these holds are sent out. Um, for the Traverse City region, um, we did transition to 
Gaylord as the location. We had reached, we, we had heard um, feedback from a number of you with regards to drive time. Driver City was originally the chosen location by uh, a majority of individuals in the collaborative, but we did run some analysis on total drive time to decrease the drive time as much as possible for the greatest number of attendees. And Gaylord did come in as making the most sense, and we sent out that information to uh, the PO leads um, and uh, tried to get as much feedback as we could and ultimately came to the decision to move it to Gaylord. Um, and so that'll be the big change for this year. Um, if you do feel that that has not worked well after these spring regional meetings, we'll, we can always reevaluate as well then too. But hopefully it's a little bit less of a drive time and a little bit easier for folks to get to. Um, and then just as a reminder for the spring, um, this does include both primary care endocrinology and nephrology practices attendees so attending so uh in going forward spring regional meetings will um require to uh, all practice types to attend the, the all of the um primary care endo and nephrology clinical champions and then fall will continue to be just primary care all right so the focus of the regional meetings are um, what we have listed here. So meds and CGM updates will usually always include in the spring regional meetings. This is something that we've heard feedback from you guys on that you always want to make sure that we're providing the most relevant and timely updates. And that will go hand in hand with the type of content that's presented at the learning community event on the ADA updates for 2024. Um, we'll also be having uh, yeah, clinical updates from endocrinology and nephrology program leads for NCT2D um, as it pertains to uh, um, guidelines for those specialties. Um, and then we'll have a discussion at the table in small groups and break you guys into the groups uh, focusing around the same QI goal. And so uh, we'll break you into the low carb diet, meds, and CGM groups to have a small table discussion. And then we'll also have a section for looking ahead for MCTTD, talking about future plans, goals, and getting feedback on where you may hope to see MCTTD venture in the future. Um, and then we also want to build in time during the break uh, for our primary care sites to meet briefly with their partnering specialist site. Um, these meetings are in person, and so we want to make sure that we're valuing the fact that these are really collaborative opportunities for collaboration um, and uh, provide that as a, a built-in component of them. So reminder, specialist VBR. Um, so the 2024 VBR for specialists does include the following measure, which is to work with your physician organization um, to choose at least one uh, primary care practice um, that you're gonna partner with. And so the, the goal here is to really to work together in order to identify one aspect of care coordination to the coordination of care between primary care and specialty care. Um, that can be improved, develop a plan for its improvement, and then uh, an example of that would be like partnering to develop an improved referral or handoff process for shared patients. Um, the deadlines for the this type of activity, for this activity is broken down into three specific deadlines. That is uh, define, uh, determine the partnership by April 1st, submit the plan by June, um, uh, and then feedback will be due in November. Um, so like I mentioned, partnerships are due in April 1st prior to those regional meetings. Um, and then uh, please do uh, bring, or please begin thinking about um, each of your specialist and primary care partnerships for this measure now, because April 1st uh, seems like a long ways away, um, but it will sneak up on all of us, I guarantee it. All right, so for 2024 recruitment, uh, that recruitment does kick off uh, on January 22nd with an informational site session for new POs. So um, that is not something that if you're on this call, you particularly need to worry about. If you're on this call, that means you're already a participating PO. Um, but this is just more of an FYI. We do have the capacity right now to bring on up to four new POs. Um, so that's something that we'll be looking forward to in 2024. Um, practice recruitment will officially open on the admin portal on February 22nd. That is something uh, to note for you guys. Um, we are also limited in the number of practices that we can bring on for 2024, um, and that number will be up to 75 new sites and a couple more details to come. Um, and then we will be hosting an info informational session for practices interested in joining um, on February 22nd at 10 in the morning. Um, and uh, that will also be available on YouTube in a recorded fashion after the event. Um, and then uh, 
we will be asking for uh, you to nominate eligible and interested primary care practices for participation by an April 19th deadline. Um, so uh, just under two months um, following that February 22nd informational session. And then participation for those new sites will kick off on September 1st of the of this year. So, and so practice eligibility requirements, just a couple of reminders here. Um, so bare minimum uh, things that have to be met in order to participate in MCTTD. You have to have an AMR. Um, you have to be uh, using an electronic medical record system. Um, you have to be either a uh, PDCM practice with at least 20 uh, patients with type 2 diabetes uh, with Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance, or be a PGIP practice with 75 plus patients with type 2 diabetes who have Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance. So those are the, the two main baseline requirements for participation. And then these are some of the considerations we're gonna be using if we do receive an outpouring of uh, applications for participation. Like I mentioned a couple of slides ago, we are uh, um, limited to 75 practices joining. And so what we're gonna be looking at is a number of different factors and weighing it um, to determine how best it'll fit with uh, in existing MCTTD infrastructure. So um, we'll be looking at factors such as geographical location. So um, if there are practices that are in underserved areas or areas that are not currently represented very broadly within MCTTD. If there's a number of practices that have applied that are safety net practices and FQHCs, those may be given additional consideration. Um, ad independent practices in the same way. Um, and then PDCM practices, information available from the PGIP list is, a, is effective and helpful for that as well. So, um, and then we'll also be looking at additional practice considerations that are uh, like things like uh, the embedded pharmacist status or if there are um, practice uh, care management or things like that that can really enable success with uh, regard to participation in mct We really want to make sure that we're setting you guys up for success. Um, and then a percentage of Medicare patients um, or Medicaid patients, excuse me, and then some other considerations um, that we may not have already thought about. Um, but this information will be provided uh, or based off of the information provided by the PO in the portal. So just a quick reminder here, we do um, we have reached out to a select number of POs uh, to start doing some PO data one on one calls. And so uh, this is really to kind of talk more intensely with some data experts from our end with the folks at your PO that handle your data elements, which is the submitting of the PPQC data to my hand to talk a little bit about some of the difficulties that you may get that you guys may be having or about some areas where we could uh, partner to improve the submission of the data or uh, things like utilizing the, the units field in the data submission. Um, and so those emails were sent out to a select number of POs back in December. We are starting with practices that primarily use Epic and Athena um, just as uh, a means of starting with uh, the um, same EMRs, and then we'll branch out to additional POs that utilize uh, additional P uh, EMR systems at a later date. Uh, so that's where the note that it doesn't apply to all POs. So if you did not receive an email about that, don't worry. It just means that we haven't reached out to you guys yet, but we will eventually. All right, and so with that, um, our February PO call schedule for MCTTD and inhale joint calls are Monday, February 12th at 11 a.m. Um, or again, or Wednesday, February 14th at 2 p.m. Um, you do not need to attend both, just one or the other as the same as it's always been. So just choose one and do please plan to attend. I'm going to stop there and ask if there are any questions or clarifications um, before turning it over to inhale. I heard somebody's voice, but I don't hear. I have a question. Oh, I, yep, I can kind of hear you. Go ahead. Okay. I'm new to this. I'm representing South Carolina. That's the piece of background. I'm representing the entire team. I'm not able to hear you. Can you repeat that? I'm new to this. I'm representing South Carolina. I'm not able to understand what you're saying. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll play this again. Okay, I heard something about a chat. I'm going to assume that you're going to put it in the chat. I can wait a second and see if that gets put in the chat here. In the meantime, if anybody else has a question, please feel free to unmute.
uh, representing Susie Hu. Who needs to attend the spring uh, meeting from the PO? Uh, so from the PO perspective, uh, you do not need to attend the, the spring regional meeting. That's your practice clinical champion that attends uh, regional meetings. Um, if you wish to have a PO level representative attend the spring regional meeting, please reach out to us and uh, we can chat about it. Will we get an invitation to the February 12th or 14th call? Um, those uh, holds should have been sent out. If uh, you do not have those, let's see, let me make sure before I say something incorrectly here. Um, yeah, those holds should be should have been sent out. Um, I can double check um, and make sure that that gets sent to you um, and uh, get that on your calendar. All right, I have a note of that so that we'll make sure to get that resent to you. Oh, you do have it. Okay, great. Just being good to cross it off my list. Any other questions before I turn it over to Sean and Carla? Great. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, Sean, are you leading today? I am. Thank you, Jake. Awesome. I'm going to make you host. Perfect. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Okay. Perfect. Can we give everyone just a moment to transition off the call if you need to, and then we will get started. All right, so thank you very much for joining. This is the second uh, of our January calls uh, for the 10th today. Uh, joining me today is uh, Kelly uh, and Carla. Welcome back, uh, Carla. Uh, that's one of our upcoming announcements. So for our agenda today, uh, we're going to go through um, some announcements and updates that we have. Uh, we'll touch on the Michigan Medicaid's response to Flovid discontinuation. Uh, we're gonna review the MTI uh, project. Uh, VBR timeline and updates, that's going to be kind of the center of our discussion today, so we will go um, extensively over that. Uh, we're going to chat about the Lung Learning Labs uh, registration uh, that was sent out, um, upcoming events and important dates, and then we will end with questions and discussions. And then, as always, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to come, um, you know, off camera. Um, you, you have the chat session as well, and you can also email the inhale support group. All right, so first off, welcome back, Carla. Carla's back uh, to us, uh, thankfully. Uh, so we're very happy to have, uh, have have her back from a multitude of uh, perspectives. Um, but if um, you need to uh, reach out to her or contact her, um, as, as well as the team, you can uh, reach out to the inhale-support at med.umich.edu email. Uh, an update, um, and thank you to Kelly. She works very, very hard on this to make sure that we have everything sent out uh, promptly. Uh, but we do have, as a fault from the re regional Rochester meeting, all the resource bags have now been shipped out. Uh, we had a bit of a, a la lag uh, from a supply standpoint. So you should have all received them. Um, if you have not, please let us know, and we will make sure that we, uh, we will get those taken care of uh, quickly for you. Okay, so we wanted to highlight the correspondence that was sent out by the Coordinating Center last week about the Flovin discontinuation update um, and Medicaid's response to that. We did send an email to the POs with this response from Michigan Medicaid's common formulary responding to the discontinuation of the brand name Flovin. So basically, the key takeaways are the generic Flovin, Adver HFA, and Adver Discus which were not previously preferred have now been classified as co-preferred. That communication was disseminated only to the POs, so we would definitely appreciate it if you would pass it down to your practices so that they are aware of this um, if, you, if you haven't already done that. And again, if there are any questions on that, please feel free to, to let us know. John, can I just do a quick um, clarification? So the discontinuation is across sure. all insurers? 
it's not, this is just Medicaid's response to it. So how they're going to be covering for it. So uh, the Flovent um, brand name is going to be uh, discontinued from all insurers and, and nationally. So this is just the Medicaid response. Okay. Thank you for that, Carla. Um, MTI, the, uh, the uh, program uh, recruitment for this. So just as a reminder, um, Recruitment will, will remain open through the second quarter of 24. Um, if you are interested, as we had talked about a couple different times, um, there is a site profile questionnaire uh, that you can find here um, that you will need to um, have the practices complete. Uh, we'll also send these slides out um, after the actual meeting. We're actually um, posting them to our website um, as well. And then a version of this video will actually be uploaded to YouTube uh, in the the in the, uh, the coming days. So again, if you have uh, any questions or you have a practice that is interested in joining, um, please let us know. Um, MTI is actually um, offered as well to have individualized information sessions. I know that there's, you know, there's been quite a few questions already, but if you would like to just have a one-on-one -on -one with them, uh, Brad Cross is actually uh, the project manager that is leading that work from the MTI side. Uh, so you can actually reach out to him directly um, at, um, at his email address and, uh, and schedule that. And again, we're in constant uh, communication with them. We meet with them um, bi-weekly. So again, if you um, have any questions on that, Please feel free to uh, to let us know. Okay, the VBR timeline updates. Okay, so we did a review of the VBR timeline updates last month at the PO monthly call. We wanted to review the updates for the timeline as well as the scorecard and give you the opportunity to ask questions or at least have some time to digest it and maybe reach out to us post uh, post meeting just to make sure that everyone is understanding and. Um, on the same page. Um, so again, as background, we were asked to update our VBR timeline by, by Blue Cross this fall, which we did. So we changed the 2025 VBR timeline measurement period to start on 1-1-24 and go through 8-31-24. So it's a nine month measurement period this year. The reimbursement doesn't change. So specialists will be reimbursed on 3-1-25 um, through 22826, and PCPs will begin the reimbursement on 9125, uh, and that will go through 8126. So nothing is affected in terms of the, the reimbursement, but the measurement period was truncated for 2024 with the reimbursement for 25. 24, sorry, excuse me, 2024 will be the only year that this that this uh, that there's going to be a, the trunk uh, truncated measurement period. So just wanted to be to be clear on that. Uh, for the 2026 VBR and beyond, the measurement periods will begin on September 1st and will go through August 31st of the following year. The reimbursement periods will continue to remain the same, uh, and they will be in March and September respectively. So this alignment helps with a more equitable payment timeline. Specialists previously had a 15-month lag for reimbursement, which will now be a six-month lag going forward. We do re realize that we had participation requirements that could start in the fall of 2023, uh, and this will be honored for the 2024 measurement period. We also understand that people were who were participating in those, so credit will be given. Uh, the alignment of the measurement timeline helps to reduce the administrative burden of the coordinating center as well as Blue Cross. And the hope is that it does make it easier for the POs to, to be able to track. So I just wanted to kind of pause there. Are there any questions on the timeline shift? Um, if you don't currently have any, but you think of later um, or after our call, again, you can please reach out to the inhale support email address, uh, and we'd be more than happy to address uh, those uh, we also are willing to um, answer um, any questions via a meeting if you would like as well. Chelsea uh, posted a question. Isn't this an eight month measurement period, not nine months? So it will actually be the nine month, um, I believe. Let me just double check and correct me if I'm wrong um, from a team perspective. Yep. It will so, be an eight-month 
measurement period because oh. January to August is eight months. Apologize, I misspoke. Thank you for that, Chelsea. Any other any other questions? Okay, uh, moving forward, uh, we do have some updates to the scorecard. Um, so for the PCP scorecard, uh, we essentially condensed the previous version to make it easier to read for all of you. Uh, but we, um, what you will notice, obviously, is the measurement dates have changed. Uh, they are January 1st to August 31st. Um, another change that we added to the actual point system. Um, so we did add the collaborative wide meetings for the PO admin leads, uh, which is not a new requirement. But what we did was we added it to the participation points. <clears throat> Excuse me. Additionally, we added another activity to be able to achieve uh, bonus points. So you're allowed to achieve two bonus points by completing two of these activities. If you nominate someone for the executive committee, we will consider that a bonus point activity and you will be awarded a point for that. <clears throat> the other change is that for you to earn the total of 105% from inhale, you need to meet both the participation and an inhaler education measure. Um, we do know that this is a change. Uh, so and we were also essentially why, why we did this, we were asked uh, to make this change. Um, and as a CQIs, um, as we you know mature, they do transfer the weight of the program from participation to performance. Um, and as a um, directly in line with that, uh, we actually um, are just going to quickly review um, the specialist um, card as well on the um, PBR measure. So again, the same changes have occurred on the specialist scorecard. So we did um, add the collaborative wide meeting for the PO admin leads, which is not a new requirement once again, uh, but it was added for uh, participation points. Uh, we will now count the executive committee nomination as a bonus point, um, and you will be hearing from us in the coming months about the formation of our executive committee, so stay tuned for that. <clears throat> and lastly, the uh, uh, participation for inhaler ed education measures um, to receive the total 105%. Um, so again, if you have any questions about um, the scorecards, the VBR, um, anything, please let us know and I'll take a, a moment just to, to pause here before we continue. Don, is it okay if I just unmute myself to ask my question? Please do, Chelsea, yes. Thank you. Um, so regarding the inhaler education measurement period being just eight months, um, is it still, a full 5% increase though, that's the goal, the same that it would be ordinarily for an entire year. Um, we were discussing this and the impact on practices and trying to think, you know, where some patients sort of had their every maybe year, if they're well controlled or every maybe they come in twice a year for like a asthma or COPD um, thing. But, you know, with the last, you know, September, October, November, and December not being included, if patients would ordinarily be coming in during those later months of the year, then they won't be captured in the measurement period. Like all the patients need to get in in the first eight months in order for this, you know, for the practice to get credit for this. So did you take that into consideration when you um, identified what the what the goal is for what their improvement or performance needs to be in order to get the VBR? One reminder, Chelsea, is that it's a PO level measure. So and yeah. um, it so it, it's all all boats will raise the raise whatever that term yeah. that thing yeah. is. Um, it is a shorter time period, yes, 
the um the other thing is that it can be um even non-participating physicians can can uh do it and have it still count it's just it's just whether the billing code um, exists or not um so it it does it's not quite as specific straight to the practice um it it is a little broader and i we're hoping that again five percent change is actually from our i i can't give you the the numbers from our data analyst perspective is not going to be a hard, uh, a challenging thing to do. Um, we would love your feedback on that. Um, that's um, so it, it, yes, yes, we do understand that this is a shorter time period. Um, we're hoping with the focus that people will be able to make these changes. And um, I think that we'll, we'll be very cognizant and, and make sure that we're watching everything um, uh, and possibly be able to, shift things if needed. Thank you. And I would say to piggyback off of that, Chelsea, um, it's not a one-to-one -one, um, asthmatic COPD patient from the previous year. You know, so because the time period is shortened, we're looking for a 5%. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm unsure if you think that you're going to have a lot of your asthmatics and COPDs visiting in the fall. And that's why there's a concern about this, but you know, if you'd like to discuss it further, please reach out and we can maybe ask our analysts to join the conversation. Great. Um, any other questions before we we move on? And as always, thank you, Chelsea, for for your questions. All right, um, so just to continue, so uh, we did want to reiterate that activities completed in the fourth quarter of 2023 for the uh, participation requirements for the previously disseminated scorecard will be counted towards the 2025 VBR cycle. The measurement year of 2024 for 2025 is, uh, or is the only truncated timeline. So starting 9-1-24, which will be our new measurement period, that will be a full 12 months. Uh, reimbursement has not changed. Uh, and again, some of these changes were made because of uh, the, as again, CQIs mature, the focus transi uh, transitions from participation to performance, uh, which we will need to reflect in our VBR. Uh, the tobacco cessation counseling is still an additive measure uh, for a total of 107% if, if participants meet the target. Um, the inhale participant inhaler education measure is worth 5%, and tobacco cessation is worth another 2% for a total of 107%. Um, I would like to point out that the POs that already received the VBR through another CQI for tobacco cessation, so essentially um, any of the POPEL CQIs, uh, you're only going to receive a one-time 2% award for that measurement year. So you, can, you can't stack additional awards from other population health CQIs, only the 102. Um, bonus point activities are an opportunity to achieve the 11 out of 16 point threshold for uh, participation. Uh, and then lastly, the VBR scorecards. And a new FAQ has been posted on the Inhale website. Uh, so again, we've been trying to do a lot of changes and make it uh, much more user-friendly. So you can find those um, by going under the member section um, under the VBR information heading and they are uh, located there. Any other questions uh, before we move on? All right, uh, so really exciting news. So we do have our Lung Learning Lab series uh, that's gonna actually kick off this month. Um, so it's going to be kicking off. The first one is on January 18th, so that's quickly approaching. Uh, we have received several emails with questions, so we wanted to kind of uh, review this with you and just make sure that we were able to answer um, any questions that that you uh, you may have. Um, so you will need to pre-register for these events on our portal. Uh, you can find the link to the portal um, here. Um, and uh, but an email was sent out. Uh, with these details. I believe it was on December 19th. Um, so make sure that you um, re review that. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to re reach out to our team. Um, you will be rewarded CME and so will all the part participants um, if they attend. Um, and if you attend by uh, viewing a recording, 
you are still able to accrue your VBR recruitment as well as CME. Uh, so those will be posted after the meeting. Um, it may actually take us, you know, a, a few days just to post those because um, we're going to need to go in and edit them down to ensure optimal um, viewability. So we will, when we will be sending an update or a reminder email also. Thank you, Carl. Um, when ready, we will post them to the portal um, or our YouTube uh, page for you to listen to. Um, we can also disseminate a link uh, once we have these posted. So you, um, you can provide that to the providers in your areas who may have not had the opportunity to attend the live sessions. On that note, again, these are going to be coming up, but does anyone have any additional questions um, on that? And again, if you are experiencing any issues as far as uh, registration, uh, please make sure to email the inhale support um, email group. This is Kathy. Um, I did email <laughs> yesterday. I tried to register and because I'm with a PO and not a practice, it doesn't let me um, register as a required field. I didn't know if there was a workaround for that. Yeah, I think we're getting that corrected right now, and Brenda will be responding back to you once it's fixed, once, okay, it, once that workaround comes around. Thank you. Thank Sorry. you, Carla. We need to get back to you. But, um, any other questions, issues that anyone else has noticed? All right, um, upcoming events and uh, important dates. Uh, so we've got our next uh, PO monthly calls. It's gonna be February 12th at 11, um, or you can join February 14th at two o'clock. Uh, you don't need to attend both, but you're obviously more than uh, more than welcome to, to attend if you'd like as well. Uh, again, the Lung Learning uh, Labster is going to run from uh, January through April. Um, so as we discussed, um, again, very excited for this. Um, so the first one is going to be kick kicking off on the 18th. Um, and we do hope that you find this both helpful and um, educational. So our proposed regional meetings are going to be May 1st, 7th, 8th, 14th, and 15th. Um, by February, we will have additional information about these and what those agendas may look like. So uh, stay tuned for that. And then we are working to kick off our MOC project. So we will have additional details surrounding that soon as well. Wanted to take a couple minutes. I know we've had some questions along the way, but uh, does anyone have any um, any other questions? Um, you know that that we've you know can it can answer now on the call or any other comments that um, of anything that we've uh, we've covered today. And again, um, if you think of things later, um, I know we just did uh, two of these um, uh, back to back this week, but if you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to the inhale um, support at med.umich.edu email address. Um, and if you require any technical support for the data dashboard, uh, just please remember to reach out to MDC. Um, also, if you have any questions surrounding your data specifically, uh, please reach out to MDC and make sure that you CC um, the inhale coordinating center team so that we can help facilitate that. We've got it's about 2.45. Uh, if you have any additional questions, please, uh, please feel free to ask. And if not, we will give you 15 minutes back on your Wednesday. All right, I don't see any additional questions. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, we hope you have a fantastic day and we will talk to you next month.